Hi, I'm Suzanne Boschma. I'm a Senior Research Scientist with New South Wales Department of Primary Industries. Today I'm going to be talking about recovery of tropical pastures uh, following the drought that we've had. One of the amazing things about tropical pastures is their ability to respond to summer rainfall. And that was certainly the case that uh, a lot of people observed uh, following the rainfall we had earlier this year. We have an experiment here at Tamworth where we have been looking at a range of tropical pastures over the last eight years. So it was a great opportunity to see what persisted through, through the dry period and also what had really good response uh, to the rainfall that we received. On this figure, we have plant frequency, a measure of persistence on the bottom, and on the left-hand side, herbage production since January and February when the rain fell. The grasses in the top right-hand corner are those that had both good persistence and excellent recovery. Of particular note are the two in the red circle, Bambatsi Panic and Premier Digit. These grasses have also done uh, extremely well across the region. Plant losses are inevitable under the drought and grazing conditions uh, that our pastures have been exposed to over the last few years. The recovery time and the strategy you use will actually depend on the state of your pasture. Um, that has come out of the drought. So if you have a pasture which has come through with minimal plant losses, you may have four or more large robust plants per metre squared, then your, your pasture is in a good position. So next spring it will be important to monitor for weeds, to reduce competition and to, and to fertilise it so that it has, has good fertility to be able to rebound and grow strong. If your stand has two or more plants per metre squared, nice big robust plants, then you've got the option to allow for seedling recruitment and for the stand to thicken. So in order to encourage that recruitment when you get good strong, good uh, spring rainfall, allow those seedlings to come through reduce your stocking rate, even destock the pasture to allow those seedlings to be able to establish well, fertilise your pasture to give it plenty of um, fertility for, for robust growth and also to um, also control your weeds so that they are not competing with your new seedlings. And you'll find probably by the end of that summer you will be back to a, a fully functioning uh, productive pasture again. Now, if you have a pasture which has less than two plants per metre squared, then you might find that you, you have two options. You can either go through the seedling recruitment process as well. Um, that could be quite lengthy if your stand is that reduced, is, is greatly reduced. But the other option you have is potentially just to remove the pasture and start again. The key to successful establishment of tropical grass pastures is prior planning and preparation. Summer grass weeds are one of the biggest issues which can affect uh, successful establishment of a tropical grass pasture. Summer grass weeds such as liverseed grass, barnyard grass or even stink grass uh, can be in very high numbers in the seed bank. It's really important to be able to control those summer grass weeds for two to three summers prior to sowing, and sowing your tropical pasture in order to be able to mine that seed bank of those annual summer grass pastures. Now that could mean spraying or controlling those weeds for four to five times a growing season. So it's, it's not a short endeavour. And if it's a particularly dry summer, then you're not getting those emergence happening. So it may mean that you need to go into that third year in order to be able to, to mine those, that seed bank to be, have successful establishment. As part of your recovery strategy, it's really important to monitor weeds and to control them when they start becoming an issue. 